Hello, we're looking at Text to Worlds Connections through 19 Minutes by Jody Picoult. There were still students streaming out of Sterling High as teams of EMTs began canvassing the building to take care of the wounded. Dozens of kids had minor cuts and bruises from the mass exodus. Scores were hyperventilating or hysterical, and even more were in shock. But Patrick's first priority was taking care of the shooting victims, who lay sprawled on the floor from the cafeteria to the gymnasium, a bloody trail that chronicled the shooter's movements. The fire alarms were still ringing, and the safety sprinklers had created a running river in the hallway. Beneath the spray, two EMTs bent over a girl who'd been shot in the right shoulder. Let's get her on a sled, the medic said. Patrick knew her, he realized, and a shudder went through his body. She worked at the video store in town. Last weekend, when he'd rented Dirty Harry, she told him that he still had a late charge of $3.40. He saw her every Friday night when he rented a DVD, but he never asked her name. As the girl whimpered, the medic took the Sharpie marker he was holding and wrote nine on her forehead. We don't have IDs for all of them, he told Patrick, so we started numbering the wounded. As the student was shifted onto a backboard, Patrick reached across her for a plastic shock blanket, one every officer carried in the back of his cruiser. He ripped it into quarters, glanced at the number on the girl's forehead, and wrote a matching nine on one of the squares. Leave this in her place, he instructed. That way we can figure out who she is later and where she was found. An EMT stuck his head around the corner. Hitchcock says all the beds are taken. We've got kids lined up on the front lawn waiting, but the ambulance have nowhere to go. What about ADP? They're full too. Well, then call Concord and tell them we've got buses coming in, Patrick ordered. From the corner of his eye, he see, saw an EMT he knew, an old timer, planning to retire in three months. He walked away from a body and sunk into a crouch, sobbing. Patrick grabbed the sleeve of a passing officer. Jarvis, I need your help. But you assigned me to the gym, Captain. Patrick had divided up the responding officers at the major crime unit of the state police so that each part of the high school had its own team of first responders. He handed Jarvis the remaining pieces of the plastic shock blanket and a black marker. Forget the gym. I want you to do a circuit of the whole school and check in with all the EMTs. Anyone who's numbered gets a numbered blanket left in the place where they've been transported. I have one bleeding in the girl's room, a girl called. I'm on it, an EMT said, picking up a bag of supplies and hurrying away. This selection probably reminds you of something. You might even be able to make personal connections with it, but we are looking at text to world connections. And when we have personal connections to something, it tends to mean we've seen it somewhere. Since this isn't a memory, we remember watching my image here, this is the Columbine High School shooting. We have plenty of horrific incidents that you and I remember, but they were world events. We can connect this image to what we've just read because we saw it on the news. In 19 minutes, um, we see three major things, and these are the connections that I have made between what I have seen and what I know from the real world. In 19 minutes, our setting, which is going to be our first set of connections. It's at Sterling High School, which is a fictional high school in uh, Rhode Island. The shooting victims are mainly in the gym in the cafeteria, according to Patrick, our sergeant on scene, and it takes place during the school day. Next, um, our sergeant gives us kind of a listing. He says that nine people, based on the, the gal at the, the video rental that he marks a nine on her forehead, um, they are wounded or dead, and then at the end of our selection, we hear an EMT call and say they found a 10th victim. And um, we're starting to see kind of a crisis that the local hospitals are all very full of the injured. Finally, our last connection I'm going to make is that no one seems to be unaffected. Um, we have an EMT that Patrick sees. He says he's months away from retirement. He's been at this his whole life, who um, is sobbing and has to kind of take a moment and catch himself. And they're shorthanded. He's trying to assign people to positions, and some of them have already been assigned to those positions, and so he's struggling to find places to put people. 
So Patrick's kind of running around, he has lots to do, and he is, even seems a little um, out of it himself, the way he's describing things in our selection. All right, these are connections that I have made um, from the news, um, from what I know about what I saw in experiences like this. I've chosen the Columbine High School shooting because that's the one that Jody Picoult uh, based her book upon. Um, we could have picked any number of public shootings, and there have been many since the 1980s. Um, this one, I think, has always stuck with us because we're from Colorado, and it's the first horrific thing we had seen in our neighborhoods. Um, so our setting, if we're comparing settings, happened Columbine High School in Littleton. Um, the main shooting areas were the library, the cafeteria, and the gym, and it also happened during the school day. Numbers-wise, Jody decided that her book was going to have less injuries, um, but in reality, 12 people were killed, 11 of those were students, and one was a teacher, and many, many people were injured. Um, in a separate section of the book, there is a student that this actually physically happened in Columbine. I remember it happening live. A student was in the upper stories, he was injured, and he just let himself fall out of a window. And um, in the same way um, that Patrick notes that there's lots of injuries and bruising and, and shock, that happened also. And so many of the students were admitted for injuries that the hospitals filled up and um, people from surrounding communities had to come out and help to get those people into um, hospitals where they would be safe. And the final connection we've made, um, again, everyone is affected. When Columbine shooting happened, I was living in Alabama, and I remember the uh, nas nationwide news and how just it was minute-by-minute minute coverage and there was nothing new to look at or no new information, but people were just so tuned in because they were just so shocked. In the Colorado area, um, not only were people un not, effect not unaffected, excuse me, um, there was a shorthand. Littleton was a very small community at that time. Um, it was going through a major growth spurt, but they didn't have the infrastructure to deal with this kind of an emergency. So the connections I have made are kind of universals. You've noticed that again and again and again with our connections. So the first one, the author took real events, wrote a fictional story, and unfortunately, um, in both these situations, Large common areas of high schools are targeted between people because people are gathered there. And since these events were um, based on the true activities and we learned the real event was based on um, someone wanting revenge, um, that same thing is true in the book also. And I could have made that connection, but we don't see that in our, in our selection. The next connection, um, because large groups of people were targeted, there are more injuries, and also, as Patrick notes, um, because the kids were panicked, they were injured as well. And let's go ahead and make this third connection ourselves. Um, violence in our society um, tends to affect most people. Um, many wanted to help. Um, we know that not just um, services, as we see in our book, there's EMTs from all different areas. Patrick notes that the state police are there. Um, but you know that people come and give blood and things like that in these sort of situations. We want to help. Um, and let's even say that. It brings out the best crises uh, situations. If you have questions about that, or anything else, please let your teacher know. We're both here to help you, and we're glad to answer any questions you have. Have a great day.